Welcome, everyone. You know, we've got just a, a, a fabulous episode today. We've, we've got the, the team from MB here with us, and you're just going to love Enid and John. They are just uh, terrific human beings. So uh, we're talking about MB, which is their new uh, tool for setting up hyper local journalism and I, I i'm just so excited uh so enid why don't you introduce us to this just a little bit sure thanks devin nice to be here um mb is a hyper local network of websites for citizen journalism as we like to call it um, and it means that we create a platform which allows any community to create its own digital newspaper. That's it in a nutshell, but there's a lot more, of course, which we can talk about. Well, John, why don't you take a minute here and, and tell us a little bit more uh, about the tool and the technology. Can you share some of that to help us understand how this works? I can indeed. Um, you know, the, the, the idea arose um, out of our publication of a local community magazine uh, quarterly that we published in uh, Columbia County, New York, which is centered on the, the little city of Hudson, which is a very, very vibrant community, um, culturally, politically, and socially. And we got an enormously good response to this publication, which was beautifully designed had extremely competent and articulate um, uh, content providers, authors, artists, and so on. And it was greatly appreciated as a, uh, as a model and a service uh, for community support and community interaction. Uh, but it was hard to sustain. And also the media landscape was changing so much over the 10 or 12 years that we published it. And so we thought, well, we've got to go online. So we did do uh, an, an online model of, uh, of the magazine, but we felt we could go further. Um, and in due course, over a, you know, a lot of consideration and discussion of what we were trying to create, it occurred to us that what we were doing for Columbia County and Hudson could also be a model for communities elsewhere and potentially for any community anywhere. So what we did was build a platform for what we call citizen journalism, where uh, subscribers themselves contribute to, um, to the content. And in this way, this created not only a, a, a record as any print newspaper would do or digital online community site, but it also in, allowed for a great deal of interaction between participants. And this gave it a completely new flavor as a model for local journalism that would address not only in our area, but across the country, the serious and alarming demise of local newspapers. It's quite unbelievable how many have gone under over the last 10 or 20 years and how those that remain are probably owned by conglomerates or else have rapidly dwindling um, readership. So we're trying to address that problem to create a model for local journalism, which includes citizen journalism that is scalable and available to any community anywhere, particularly in those areas that are now designated as, as news deserts, which have no local news whatsoever. And yeah, I just, what, just, it's a crisis, isn't it? Amy, go ahead. It certainly is uh, a crisis. Just to add to that, what it means is that any registered user can post news stories, feature stories, opinion pieces, reviews of cultural events, memoir pieces, events, announcements, 
all kinds of things, and thereby become citizen journalists. And it's been very interesting to see that one of the biggest uses is among citizen activists who are trying to advocate the cause. And often, most of the time, the causes are aligned with our mission to build community with the values of localism, sustainability, and justice. So it's it's been very gratifying to see how people are using it. I mean, that's just one one way. They also use it for all the other ways that I described. Yeah, I'd like to add to that that the the project is you know the demise of local journalism is not just a, an absence of information, which is certainly a pro huge problem, uh, but it also threatens and undermines democracy itself that in especially in you know large democracies like the united states or the united kingdom the interaction between uh, local citizens is so important and we all know what's happening to news these days it gets you know packaged into messages which just have an intended to have instant appeal and don't allow for discussion and debate and so on and local news plays an enormously important role and has done for the last 200 years in this country. And its diminishment is really a serious issue for the preservation of democracy. It, it really is. It, it, it's just incredibly uh, tragic what's happening. I, I grew up in a town that had two vibrant uh, local papers and uh you know, one of the two uh, it, it just has really, really struggled. And the other one is certainly not prospering. Uh, it, it's uh, and so many cities, of course, have lost their local papers altogether. Or as you've noted, they, they've yeah. become uh, absorbed, acquired by the big uh, conglomerates. You know, the USA Today owns uh, how many dozens oh. of papers, maybe hundreds across the country now, like in my town. My, my town paper is owned by uh, Gannett, right? So uh, yeah. it's, yeah, uh, it's, yeah. a, it's a problem, you know, that lack of... Well, the of beauty of MB is that it doesn't need any conglomerate to own it. Any, any citizen can set up an, an eventually, technically, we haven't done it yet, but potentially any, any, anybody can set up an MB site for their own community. And you know, with what we're calling citizen editors um, who would take responsibility for building uh, readership and so on, it would become a resource for any community and one that is wouldn't cost them anything. In fact, they could make money off it because they're responsible also for selling advertising. Yeah, I mean, what a great, what a great model. Uh, and I, you know, it's, it's, it's very exciting. Uh, you're also right now, you're, you're running a crowdfunding campaign on, on honeycomb credit. Tell us a little bit about uh, how you are, uh, how and why the crowdfunding campaign. Ina, do you want to tackle that for a sec? Sure. It, it kind of uh, arose. It sort of fell into our laps. Somebody recommended honeycomb to me and I just went to look at the website and signed up for the newsletter. And before I knew it, I was getting phone calls and we were in a, a campaign, which made real sense to us because Honeycomb's focus is on crowdsourcing local capital. And our focus is on crowdsourcing local news. So it was a nice, a nice it is a nice collaboration and it's been very nice so far. We love the people who we've worked with and it's going well. Um, we have, I think it's 12 days left, something like that. Uh, and we're, you know, we're still raising money. Yeah. And we're getting it, a lot of it from our own community, but also from people who are far afield because even though we're very much a small local company so far, um, as we've been discussing, there are national implications 
and we can, if we have the resources, expand anywhere and everywhere. So we're getting investments from people in all parts of the country, as well as our own communities. Yeah, that's terrific. Uh, John, tell us about the interaction with the team at Honeycomb. Uh, how have they supported what you're doing with your campaign? Well, I think Ian is better uh, qualified to, uh, to answer that question in detail. But from my perspective, they've just been wonderful, tremendously helpful. And, you know, it's a, it's a fascinating thing. And in our case, we're, uh, we're not just, it's not just like a Kickstarter campaign where we're seeking donations. Um, contributors are investors and actually receive a stake in the company. And uh, that's not been something that's been available um, for very long. When was it? I think 2015, the SEC, yes. um, you know, enacted this uh, provision. And so, which is great. Um, and so anybody can invest as little as $100, you know, or as much as whatever one's asking for. It's a, it's, it's a really wonderful thing. And the people there at Honeycomb have just been fantastic. They've made the, the process so simple and they followed along every, every few days. They check in with us and we check in with them and tremendously personable and uh, responsible operation. Yeah. Enid, uh, I don't know if you want to add to that, uh, how the team has worked with you, but I'd love to know what the, what is the business model for MB? How do you make money? Well, we make money mo at this point from advertising only. And because everything on MB is free except the ads, and the ads are quite reasonably priced, but, but they do obviously cost something. And that's, that's the business model. We've considered or we are considering adding subscriptions and various other ways of earning revenue, merchandising. We'll probably add some of those things. But apparently in those areas, especially in the areas of the country that don't have vibrant local news sources, that means there are also no good medium, you know, media for advertising. So, and all of our advertising is local at this point. We may in, you know, in due course eventually add larger companies, but right now what we're a big part of our mission is to support not only local business but local nonprofits and many of them are advertising no fantastic fantastic well um we're here today with enid fetterman and john isaacs of uh imbi and they've created this great platform for hyper local journalism. They're raising capital on honeycomb credit. And I invite you to go check that out. Uh, we're going to take a short break here. When we come back, we're going to talk to them about their superpowers. They're great people. You won't want to miss this discussion. So stick around. You can get in on the ground floor to help fix the climate crisis for as little as $100. Pause now to scan the QR code to get started or visit s4g.biz slash raise green. You can be a green at raise green. Join us at Supercrowd Chicago with community focused business leaders and investors working to support diverse founders, social entrepreneurs and community builders. Learn how to raise money from the crowd and invest like a pro on June 12th at Columbia College Chicago. Register now at thesupercrowd.com. Hope to raise money from the impact crowd. Good investors are as interested in community, social or environmental impact as you. Connect with Funding Hope, an SEC-registered FINRA member crowdfunding portal to learn how to raise capital from the impact crowd. Scan the QR code now. Welcome back. We're, 
We're here with Enid Fetterman and John Isaacs, just a, a great dynamic duo of local hyper journalism uh, at IMBI. And we're going to shift gears now and talk to them about their superpowers. Uh, so stick around. Um, Enid, let's start with you. Uh, I, I look at what you're doing here and I just uh, so admire you. I, I'm so impressed. Thank with you. what you're doing and, and grateful for the energy you're bringing to something that is really near and dear to me. What is your superpower? Well, you know, I hope this doesn't sound sappy, but in a word, love. <laughs> I think, you know, I think you have to love what you're doing and care deeply about it because even if it's a business, it's a labor of love. <laughs> it should be a labor of love. And you know, we, we love what we're doing and we love what we think we can do uh, for journalism, for local journalism. And, and we're, you know, we're kind of tenacious about it. It's not an easy thing to do, but the only way to do something that isn't easy is to love it because otherwise it's just too hard. Uh, and, yeah. you know, yeah. That's that's one of them. There are others, but I'll let John. <laughs> okay, John. What about you? What's your superpower? Well, let me say, you know, I'm getting on in life. I've been around, you know, traveling and many a succession of a variety of different careers. I was trained uh, in philosophy. I became a filmmaker. I ran a nonprofit. Uh, spiritual school in New York for many, many years. Um, I've been involved with publishing and especially in the art world over the last 20, 30 years. And when Enid and I came up with this idea for our local magazine, you know, I fell right into that. It seemed like a, uh, uh, a, a really realistic application of my skills and my experience. And IMBI seems even more so that, you know, putting together everything that I've experienced in this life, in my life, um, brings me to the conclusion that, um, you know, it's not about chasing wealth. It's certainly about chasing health, but really um, it's about doing something that is critical for society. And I tried this, you know, decades ago with uh, various uh, movements related to spirituality and health and so on. And that was very rewarding, but it didn't go directly to the core of uh, what it takes these days with all the pressures that the world is under and democracy again is under. That it, I, 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 I want to do something that really makes a difference to communities. And this, I think, is something that is crying out for attention. And, uh, you know, it's taken a lot of experimentation, but I think we're getting there. And uh, certainly people in our neck of the woods, in our backyard, so to speak, um, have found it very useful, very impressive. And I hope we can expand that opportunity for, for communities. Yeah, I, I, that's, that's brilliant. I, uh, Enid, I want to come back to you now. Uh, you talked about love as your superpower. Can you share one super quick example of how you deployed love and accomplished something you're proud of? Yeah, I, I, I've worked for decades, actually, on another uh, labor of love project, um, a musical theater piece that I wrote the book and lyrics for. And it's something that I care deeply about. And next week I'm traveling to Amsterdam to see a, a new production of it because it's evolved over these decades into something that's close to being what I want to see even though it's had some real successes before this. And it's, it's very gratifying. It's based on Anne Frank's diary, 
And it's something that is incredibly close to my heart and mind. And it's a good example of what happens when you love what you're doing and put the love for it into it and don't give up, basically. Yeah. It's basically That's about great. not giving up. Yeah. John, what about you? Can you think of an example of how you deployed your superpower and got something that you are proud of out of it? Just a few seconds here. Well, you know, aside from my working uh, on MB, which is it takes an enormous amount of my time, I'm also a uh, designer of art books and uh, other graphic uh, projects. And there's something enormously uh, satisfying to me about print. And, you know, I've got a number of really interesting print book projects under my belt. And, but the sad thing, so I'm very proud of those. I love working on books and print, especially illustrated books and so on. Um, but the sad thing is that they're under threat and challenged. It's going to be very difficult over, you know, in the future to support print, beautiful and wonderful though it is. And so I have to say that if, if there's anything at this stage in, of my life of which I'm proud, it's certainly in me, and hopefully it will be a success. Well, it, it is certainly something that you can rightfully be proud of. Uh, it, it is so exciting to see this, and I, I'm, I'm hoping it'll be hugely successful. Um, Enid, I wonder if you could give us a tip for either developing love for what you're doing or uh, how you would switch to something you do love. How, how would you cope with that? you know, alignment? Well, I did switch. I, I, I spent many years in advertising and I loved it at first because I learned so much about photography and film and music and actually it led me to writing lyrics and book for musical theater, but it wasn't deeply satisfying because I often didn't like the things didn't approve of the things that I had to sell. And often I didn't, I just didn't want to sell really anything except what I could create. And eventually I had the strength to move away from it as lucrative as it is. And I think you have to realize where you know, where richness really, riches really reside. And that love is, is food, you know, it's food for your soul and you need, you need, because it's your life. You spend so much time working that if it's not something you really love, it's, it's not good for you on any <laughs> level. So you just have to recognize that and be conscious of it and, and, and find the thing, because I think there's something that everybody loves and wants and needs to do. They just have to find it. Yeah. John, how would you coach people to develop a, a superpower like yours? Ah, well, I've done a lot of coaching in my life. You know, I think, the, I, let me say, I think that one of the things is not to be driven by the outside world and the pressures it puts on you um, and to develop a really good sense of self-awareness, self-reflection, self-observation. It matters enormously to step outside of yourself and look from outside at yourself without, you know, judgment um, and dispassionately. And to do that, probably once in the morning and once in the evening and now and again throughout the day where you really look at your circumstances and and um, just observe them. Don't judge them. Just have a self-awareness. And this is enormously important. And as I said, you know, I was a <clears throat> philosophy student for many years um, in a very prestigious department in Britain. And that was basically, you know, what there wasn't a lot of spiritual 
uh, context to it, but it was always the message that you look at yourself from outside and don't stay in your head and just, yeah. you know, sink into your uh, anxieties or your fears or yeah. your whatever they are, that yeah, you, you, take, you take an objective look at yourself. And that really helps um, develop you the, as a balanced being. Yeah. Well, thank you both for being with us today. Uh, again, you. let me encourage everyone to uh, uh, visit Honeycomb Credit to learn more about the offering. This is an exciting moment for MB. We're excited. Thank you very much for being here. We want to wish you every success in the great work that you're doing. Thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. Devin. Thank you, Devin. Alrighty. Thank you for all of this. Thank it's you. Yeah. Let's do some good. <laughs>